Hi guys, welcome back. This is going to be the video summary of episode 7 of the ICT Mentorship 2022. As always, refer to ICT original content. This is just a refresh of what he has taught us in episode 7. So let's get started. In this episode, we are going to go through the importance of higher time frames and the link between different index future markets. Higher time frames are extremely important because very often we can see the same behavior of the price, the same patterns on a higher time frame and on a lower time frame. When we are trading, it's very important that we have a global vision of where the price could be going that specific day. So we are setting our bias and our expectations. And to do so, it's very important to start always from a higher time frame. And we're going to start with the Nasdaq 100 e-mini futures. And we're going to start with the one day time frame that really allows us to see where the price was going on a more higher time frame, on a more general base, and to set our expectation for the specific day that we are going to be analyzing. So we set our bias of where the price should be going on a one day time frame, and then we move lower to the 15 minutes time frame. I'm going to show you here the screenshot of the ICT markups for the Nasdaq mini futures for the 15 minutes time frame. Here we can see the buy side liquidity and the sell side liquidity. I want to show you here also my own markups. So guys, let's follow the process step by step. First, we sign with the blue line the beginning of the day and with a yellow line, in my case, you can of course decide your own colors, the 8.30 in the morning, which is our starting time. And now we start looking at lows and highs in order for us to set up our buy side liquidity level and our sell side liquidity level. If you are a beginner trader as I am right now, what you would do next is simply look at the Nasdaq itself and see what the price is doing. But ICT, of course, goes one step further. And while he's checking the Nasdaq in mini futures, he also goes to the S&P e-mini futures and check what the price is doing there. So let's do it together. ICT tells us that the S&P 500 e-mini future is giving him a hint of where the Nasdaq will be going next. So of course, we're going to be doing our markups also for the S&P 500. And let me show you ICT's markup for the S&P 500 e-mini futures. As you can see here, you have buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity, and you have the main most important levels. Allow me also to show you my markups, which of course, following the process, we sign with a vertical line, the beginning of the eight and then 8.30 in the morning. And in that range, we also go and search for our buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity. Now we have followed our process by signing the vertical lines and searching for liquidity. And we start thinking, what should the price be doing next? So let's cover the chart and all the things after the yellow vertical line. So after our 8.30 in the morning, what are we expecting the price to do? Take a moment guys here and think about what do you think the price is going to be doing next? What's your expectation and why? Feel free to pause the video for a second and set your expectations. ICT tells us that considering that the price right at that moment is in the lower range of that day, that would give us a hint that the price will probably go for the sell side liquidity first. Considering that the price is in the lower mid range of that day, we would be expecting the price to first go lower and take the sell side liquidity. On the S&P 500 e-mini futures, we're going to zoom in and look more closely at this area here. 
This is going to be the moment in which we want to go on a lower time frame and from the 15 minutes time frame switch to the 2 minutes time frame. Now let's zoom in in the area that is important for us. I allowed myself to add some points here such as point A, B and C so that we can go through the process and really follow what has been happening one thing at a time. In point A, we see that the price takes out sell-side liquidity. Then the price goes higher and it forms a fair value gap, which you can see in point B. And in point C, the price keeps going higher and it actually takes out a previous high. That's very interesting, isn't it? As we have learned so far, we have our displacement low and our displacement high. And between these two, we are expecting a fair value gap to form, which indeed is happening in this case. Remember, we are still on the S&P 500 e-mini futures, the two minutes time frame. ICT tells us something that really blew my mind when I was watching this episode, which is to compare the S&P 500 e-mini futures with the Nasdaq 100 e-mini futures. So I zoomed in and I put the two screenshots for you here. ICT wants always to be trading an index that has a higher volatility, such as in this case, the Nasdaq. We need to know that the averages of different indexes really move in tandem. They kind of go or have the tendency to go in the same direction. But on the Nasdaq, we do not see any fair value gaps forming while we do see a fair value gap forming on the S&P. ICT will be using the fair value gap that just formed on the S&P to time his entry in the Nasdaq index. Guys, isn't that a little bit crazy? I think so, at least for me, it really was. What actually gave ICT the confidence to be quite sure or to expect the price to be turning there? To understand that better, ICT shows us this screenshot. We can see on top the Dow, in the middle the Nasdaq, and on the bottom the S&P, because ICT shows us a dotted line. I made it a little bit more apparent and I'm going to be zooming for us so that we can see it more clearly. If we look at the Nasdaq and at the S&P, we see that the two dotted lines for these two indexes are kind of going in the same direction. They are going lower. They are forming two lower lows. Well, this is not happening for the Dow Jones. But what is this actually telling us about the Dow? The Dow is not willing to go lower than the price that it has at that moment. He's diverging, he's behaving in a slightly different way. That will tip somehow those that are looking for a divergence in the correlation between the different indexes and it's going to make those people stand and be like, okay, what is going on here? At that moment, the indexes are not moving in tandem anymore. And that happens at a very important time for us. That happens when both the Nasdaq and the S&P are trading below an old low. That said, guys, just because this is happening and we are paying more attention in that moment, this is not a signal or a signature. This alone doesn't mean anything. So always keep in mind that this is a tip. This is not a signal, meaning that if it is a tip, we have to really look at the behavior of the price in its entirety and this alone is not a signal that one thing or the other will be happening. We need the narrative, we need the story of the price, we need to really look at what is developing through time. Okay, now going back to the Dow, why is this even happening? Why are we seeing the price and the Dow being unwilling to go lower? The Dow is indeed showing us an unwillingness to go lower. That also means that there is an underlying accumulation of long positions that is waiting in the background. In the Dow Jones, the ICT tells us that in this case specifically, we can see a macro, which is an algorithm that runs the price 
and it is preparing for the price to go higher. Remember, the algorithm runs first on time and then on price, so time is extremely important for us. ICT reminds us that no matter what we are seeing on the charts, we have to take our own precautions, always put a stop loss, and no matter how sure we are that the price is going to go in one direction or in the other, we truly need to be managing our expectations and our risks. Once in a while, even if we see all the right confirmations, the narrative is perfect, the time is right and so on and so forth, we're going to be wrong and that's totally fine. We need to take responsibility, manage our own trades and manage our own risk. And for this reason, always, always, always put our stop losses. That for me was really interesting and quite mind-blowing what Michael shows us until that moment in the episode 7. He is trading the Nasdaq that has a higher volatility, but he's actually using a fair value gap on the S&P to know that he should be entering a position in that specific moment. And on a more macro perspective, he's also checking the Dow to see that there is an accumulation of longer positions, so a further confirmation of the narrative that he has in mind at that time. That's, that's incredible, guys, I get chills. After that, Michael shows us his own trading strategy with the Tinkerswim platform. So go check it out directly on episode 7 of the ICT Mentorship 2022. Okay, I want to read you something funny that Michael mentions in this episode. So he said that traders in the 90s on the physical floor, remember when you like have to place order with those like little papers that you would bring there, like I'm not even sure how things were working in the 90s. Anyhow, Michael says that traders in the 90s on the physical trading floor would put sometimes like their skin into the race which literally means that would take a position right at the beginning of the day to be fully, completely invested and see where the price would be going that day. Michael said that the first time that he heard that, he thought like that was crazy, that was a little bit like of a stupid thing, like you're just throwing money away, right? But he said that actually through time, he could see that that was one of the fastest way to learn, to really put your skin in the race and see what the price was doing and also to have a direct feedback loop because you are either losing or winning and so faster you're gonna really engrave that mechanism into your own thinking and into your own thought patterns. You are reading the reaction that the price is having after you have entered that position. What is the price doing? Is it behaving fast? Is it behaving slow? Is it lethargic? Is it really like pushing it. When we enter a trade, we receive an immediate feedback of what the price is doing and we also have a different emotional attachment to it. And so we learn faster. That said, I am still on a demo account and doing my mistakes that way and I can assure you when I'm losing, I'm still feeling it. <laughs> Let's keep going guys. Let's do the hard work. This is the way. I want to share with you a sentence that I heard some time ago and that really stuck with me, which is easy choices, hard life, but hard choices when you do the difficult things will mean that eventually you are going to get to have an easier life. 